Good evening, I'm Dr. Timothy Hoover, and I'm taking it to the house. Wow, man, the NBA season, it's on and popping. I'm talking about the postseason, the real season, and we're going to spend a majority of the show really breaking down the playoffs. But I must lead into what we left off last episode. My co-host, uh, Dr. C. Victor Herbin III, he talked about Mother's Day. And it got me to thinking. I wanted to celebrate also to all the mothers out there, just to wish that you guys had a fantastic Mother's Day. But I want to talk to the sons and to the daughters and to the husbands, let you all know that Mother's Day is not just one day out of the year. No, 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 no. We celebrate those women in our lives, the mothers that are in our lives. We need to celebrate them every day. So if it's been a minute, Heck, if it's just been since Sunday, no, call her. Let her know that you love her. See what her needs are. Check on them. Not just the one day out of the year. And it's, not, and it's more than flowers, guys. It's gestures. It's uh, acts of kindness. So please reach out. Let them know. Because so many of us have lost mothers or are missing mothers. And my brother... My co-host Vic, we, my sister, his mother, we lost her just a few short years ago. And so, you know, just know that you have a chance, as long as she's living, to embrace her. Please do, because we can't embrace my sister, for instance. My mother is still living. She just had a birthday. She's 90 years old. And yes, I call her regularly. Am I perfect? Heck no, <laughs> not at all. But it's just to remind us all that we are to honor our mothers. Please do. Let's jump off into, while we're talking about ladies, the WNBA, Caitlin Clark. Well, Caitlin, you're not in Kansas no more. The first two games have been very trying for you. And I believe in you. I actually believe your skill set will translate into the WNBA. The college game is a different game than the WNBA. And we talked about it on this show before. You're going to have some challenges. You're going to have people who are paid, paid. Their job is to stop you. Their job is to slow you down. Their job is to make your life miserable for those, for those minutes, that time on the court. And you're going to have to figure it out. And I believe you can. So what happens? Caitlin uh, Clark fans, don't be dismayed. Don't be disappointed. Do not worry. She was the number one draft pick. Why? Because the fever, Indiana fever, they were, they were terrible. And because she's now the number one draft pick on a, a bad team, this is, we, sh we should expect these kind of outcomes from her. And she's playing a couple of the best teams in the WNBA. So will she get better? I believe so. Is it, is it going to be rough starts? Yes. And she's a rookie. And she just had a long run in her college career. The season is just over, just over maybe a month ago. So she's still recovering, getting her legs under her. And she's, she's going to have those challenges. And so Caitlin Clark, uh, you got the world paying attention to you. A lot of venues are changing because they need larger capacities. So the Caitlin Clark effect is in full effect. Uh, but do not be disappointed. Do not even be shook up about your own game. These are grown women, and they're going to come after you every night because you're the chosen one. Expect it. Just a few minutes, we're going to go right into the NBA. Let's congratulate 
uh, the Boston Celtics. Uh, you handled your business. You're now in the Eastern Conference Finals. Not a surprise to anybody. The surprise is, what's taking you so doggone long? Man, it was Miami the first round and it was Cleveland the second round. I mean, they have nobody on, on their team. Yeah, Donovan Mitchell, he, he's, he's good. He's very good. But Donovan Mitchell by himself, I'm talking about with the Cleveland Cavaliers, should not have been a problem. Boston Celtics, you let the world see how vulnerable you are. You're not a juggernaut. You can be beat. And if you keep playing with your food, if you keep acting up, if you don't take the game serious, you're going to get caught. You're going to get snatched up. Miami should not have had one game. Cleveland, in my humble opinion, yeah, they're pros. They should not have gotten a game either. So uh, Boston, get it together. You guys got so much talent. I don't know if it's coaching. I don't know if it's plays. I don't know if you guys are playing too much ISO ball. It could be all of the above. But the basketball guys will come and get you. I do, again, want to congratulate you on making it to the Eastern Conference Finals again. But Draymond Green said it. He said it best. Nobody cares. Nobody cares you get to the Eastern Conference. Nobody really will care that you get to the championship because in the Eastern Conference, it's pretty easy run. No, you're right now poised and should be winning the NBA championship. Do I want to see it? No. We have people that do. I'm a basketball junkie. I'm a basketball fan. Boston, your record says you are the best team in the NBA. Your record says that. And however, you're playing like you're not the best team in the NBA. And I need you to play up to what your record indicates. And right now, you're very vulnerable. You're waiting for the winner of the Indiana Pace, uh, Indianapolis, the Pacers and the Knicks. You're waiting. What a series we have over there. Tom Thibodeau, I have a new love and respect for you. Uh, Jalen Brunson, a new love and respect. Now I can focus on you. I can see your game and I can see uh, how magnificent you guys as a collective, the Knicks as a team are. And so what? Uh, Robinson is out. Mitchell Robinson is out. So what? Um, Randall out, is out. Julius Randall. Uh, I want to call him the Obi-Wan Kenobi, but it's not Obi. <laughs> he's, he's hurt with a hamstring pull. I, I can't mention his name. I forget his name. I won't pronounce his name correctly, even if I did have it right in front of me. Uh, but the Knicks. Wow. Wow. So you guys are getting ready to play game. Uh, six tonight, and it's going to be uh, in Indianapolis. So, I expect Indian. I expect the Knicks to win. Close them out. Be done with it, and then be poised and fight like hell with Boston. You're the better threat against Boston in the Eastern Conference. I don't think the Pacers. I've looked at the Pacers. The Pacers are maybe they're undisciplined, but they just want to run. They just want to outrun you. They just want to outlast you. But when things break down, which the playoffs do, when they want to slow down, you can't get a rebound. You can't play defense. You don't have any plays that are, that are working. And Brunson, it doesn't matter who you put on him. He's going to find a way. He's going to score. DiVincenzo is going to score. Josh Hart, former Laker. Wow. Wow and wow. So um, I'm interested to see who's going to win this series. I, I thought the Pacers were going to win because I thought they were going to outlast the Knicks. I picked the Pacers to win, but the Knicks, I need to apologize to you. I didn't expect this, and the way you guys are playing, the way you guys are, I, I want to call you very humble. I, I really want, want to say that, but there's no pro player that is really humble. But the style that you play, it's, not, it's relentless, and it, it's no quit. No, don't give in. I love the style. I love the play. And even Brunson himself, he's got a bad ankle, a bad foot. Uh, and, but yet you don't see him saying, I got a bad leg, bad foot. No, he's lacing them up and he's dropping 40 on you almost on a nightly basis, the Pacers. So who's going to show up tonight? It's on the road, Knicks. You're on the road. Pacers are at home. Generally, the guys, uh, the, 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 the others, if you want to call them, play very well at home. Which Pacers team is going to show up? I can guarantee you the Knicks are going to come up. They're going to show up. Which Pacers team? Halliburton, 
Are you going to are you going to be ready to play tonight? Because ready or not, here comes the Knicks and they want to end it tonight. So uh, Pacers, I don't have any faith in you. Knicks, go ahead, finish them, dust them off. I'm looking forward to the Knicks and Boston uh, in the Eastern Conference Finals. Let's transition into the Western Conference. Minnesota and Denver. Um, the way that started out, on the road, Minnesota, you're on the road, you're in Denver, you won the first two games. There are more people, like my co-hosts, there are people that thought we're calling sweet. And I was hedging, I was hedging. I said, man, the Nuggets gotta win at least one, right? They gotta win at least one. Check the tape, mark the tape, look at last week's episode. I said, they gotta win at least one. Well, they went ahead and won the next three. I'm like, oh, whoa, okay. Good series. I love this series. Right now, the series is 3-3. Three, three. Seventh game is gonna be in Denver. I loved, I love the game, but I don't believe either team has been very consistent, but when they play at their best, there are some very, there's some very good moments even in the game. Who's got the better team? I think Denver has the better team. Uh, we got Minnesota led by the Ant-Man, Anthony Edwards, and then, then you got everybody else who are very inconsistent, but the Ant-Man is, is bringing it for the most part. On the road, high level game, Will Minnesota be able to show up? I don't know. If I had a gun to my head right now, who would I pick? Man, you, you can't go against the champs. Jokic, Murray, uh, and, and KCP. You got uh, Porter. My goodness. Role players who are all-stars in their role. And then you got Jokic, who is going through Gobert who's going through Towns, who's going through Reed. It doesn't matter who, who you put on them. What is confusing Joker is the timeliness of the double team. What's confusing him is, is it's, it's consistently just a seven footer keep coming at him. And it, 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 I'm sure it's tiring wearing him out and he needs help. Jokic needs help. So I'm curious uh, if Murray will show up. He's been inconsistent. Uh, but what a series, what a series. I picked Denver to win it in seven. Uh, now, I would not have said that when the series started again, when Minnesota won the first two, I would not, have, I didn't see it. I thought Minnesota was just coming at them, blitzing them with the, with the defense and was superior, but I've been proven wrong. To, to be the champs, you got to beat the champs. And so Minnesota, if you want the world to know who you are, beat Denver in Denver. Game seven. Wow. What a statement. And it's knocking down the door to the LeBrons and to the Currys and to KD, who are not no longer in the playoffs, that I and we have arrived. Minnesota, we have arrived. So looking forward to that. The other Western Conference series, a uh, very good series as well. We got OKC against Dallas. Um, SGA, again, with me being able to focus on these games singularly, I can see your game. I can see your game. I can see you. I can see now why you were mentioned as uh, the second in the MVP voting. You play second. I can see it. You can get to your spots on the floor. You can dribble drive. You can pull up. You can shoot the three. It doesn't matter if you got a defensive specialist on you. It doesn't matter if they switch. They need to take the ball out of your hands, but you, you're still be able to beat the double team and score. You're still getting your 30 points a night. It's the other players on your team. Coach um, for OKC, I don't know your name. A mistake you made in game, what was that, game four? When you took out your starter, Giddy. Uh, Game five, I'm sorry, it was game five. And you took Giddy out, put him on the bench and you put, brought in uh, Joe. And that was after a win. You had, the series was two, two at the time. That was after a win and you're at home. And I'm, I gotta ask, just like a lot of the talking heads, why would you do that after a win? You're messing up two players. You're messing up Joe and you're messing up Giddy. Their confidence. Uh, yeah, man, I, I understand you probably, you know the pulse of your team better than anybody else. 
but Charles Barkley, myself, and others are questioning you and the move right then. Why? The player, Giddy, wasn't hurt. He's an outside, he wasn't shooting from the outside consistently. Joe does shoot from the outside, but it didn't work. Would I be saying something different if it did work? Yes, I would have said, man, a great move. But most people, and I would agree with this, after a win, you don't make those, those changes. You don't make those moves, not in the playoffs. No, you don't do that. If Giddy is not performing, you shorten a leash and you, then you pull him out and then you bring somebody else in. But right now to, to, to mess with a psyche, uh, yeah, no, bad move, yeah. So I'm Monday morning quarterback and I'm gonna say, it was a bad move. Didn't agree with it when, you, when it happened. I don't agree with it now. I'm curious what you're gonna do when you guys play uh, uh, game six and will Giddy be back in the starting lineup? Man, you got to stick with it, whatever you do, coach. OKC, uh, number one in the Western Conference uh, by record, but not number one to me as the better team. So you still, you got to win this game six to force a game seven. You got to win the next game, uh, next game being in Dallas. Kyrie Irving, uh, what's up, bro? What's going on? Are you hurt? Luke is hurt, but Kyrie, are you hurt? Because you're not playing Kyrie like ball. You're facilitating. Yeah, that's cool. You're not breaking down anybody. You're not scoring, and you need to be a scorer's mentality or have a scorer's mentality. Thank God, goodness for P.J. Washington, and thank you for their, their, their center tandem, tandem that's going on. That's really holding things and keeping things afloat for Dallas. Because Luca even himself has been consistent, but he has ailments. I get it. I just want to know what's going on with Kyrie. Uh, I didn't pick OKC to win this series. I picked Dallas to win this series. Uh, and that's what everything being even. But Dallas can be had too. It's been proven. And OKC has won on the road. And will they win to force a game seven? My call, I say uh, Dallas finish it in six. It's not going to go back to OKC. OKC, you have uh, brought national attention to a small market team, being you guys in Oklahoma. Uh, your coach has work to do, and you guys as players, being as young as you are, you got a lot of growing up to do. Uh, but I'm excited for each of the matchups. We got, again, India, uh, the Pacers against the Knicks tonight. We got... Uh, Denver and Minnesota, a uh, game seven. I can't wait for that to be played out in the game six with uh, Dallas and OKC. Those series to be finishing up, going into the next game, I'll be tuned in. I will have my popcorn ready, and I'm excited for this brand of basketball, intensity of basketball at this level right now. I mentioned no LeBron. I mentioned no, uh, uh, no KD, no Curry. And I, I still feel that the NBA is in great hands. You move on. You got Wimby in, 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 on the side, ready to show his where. You got SGA, you got Luka, you got Jokic. Jokic. Uh, the NBA is in great hands.
Well, we're closing up our show. Um, we just want to say thank you on behalf of my producer, Steve, myself, and my co-host, Steve, uh, C. Victor Herbin III. We just want to say thank you for taking the time out, whatever device you're on, whatever platform you're listening to us or watching us. We say thank you, thank you, thank you. Until next week, you guys have a good one. And we love you and we'll see you.